If you took a walk on a pleasant Friday evening close to our preschool, you would hear children exclaiming, no, you, that's not nice, that's so sad. Surprisingly, these exclamations are not negative. They reflect the empathy children felt while watching pictures of garbage patches floating in the oceans and animals entangled in plastic. Now, let me introduce myself. My name is Milica and welcome to my National Geographic Educator Certification Capstone. I am a preschool teacher and an English teacher for grades 1 through 4. This project was conducted in Školigrica, a lovely preschool located in Novi Sad, Serbia. The project was called The Plastic Planet and the main topic was plastic pollution and water pollution. The semantic unit consisted out of three lessons, one of them being an outdoor lesson, which lasted for two hours. Let's speak into our first lesson. In the first lesson teacher, we... Teacher, what are you doing? I'm telling a story about a project I had with the third graders. Would you like to hear it? Yes, I can't wait to be a third grader. We started our lesson with flashcards. We learned new words and then we watched a presentation about plastic pollution and described the pictures. Wow, I really like the presentation, but I feel sad when I see animals eat plastic. Yes, I agree with you. It is sad. This is why we played a shopping list game and discussed what do we really need to buy and what is not necessary. This lesson left a big impression on the children. After that, we played a garbage compost recycle game and sorted out the garbage. I would like to play this game as well. Did you have any homework? As a matter of fact, we did. It was called Perils of Plastic. The kids needed to collect all the plastic garbage their families made in a week, measure it and think about ways to reduce garbage in their families. They were shocked with the results, but eager to keep learning. That is such a hard homework. What happened after that? Ah, lesson number two was an outdoor lesson. We went to the Danube and started our exploration with a treasure map to find our lesson location. That's the best idea ever. After that, we had experiments. Yay, experiments. That was one of the most important moments of the lesson, and we concluded that the pollution is there, even if we don't see it. Well, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yes, it is. In the end of the lesson, we had the research on the bank, and the children needed to discover traces of animals, plants, the type of material, and the riverbank surroundings. Then we measured the water speed and the temperature. Yeah, that sounds hard. Um, did you get back to the classroom after that? Yes, unfortunately. The final lesson was back in the classroom. We filled a Danube Basin map with information like capital cities and countries along the Danube. After listing the countries, we played a trash flow game. What is that? Hmm. It is a game where we pretend to be the Danube waves, which flew through the four capitals carrying the trash to Black Sea. This part of the lesson was very important because we located many countries and discussed which countries pollute the most. What do you think? What was our conclusion? Mm, countries at the end of the Danube probably suffer the most. Precisely! This finding gave us an idea to make a trash reduction plan for our school because ultimately all of our trash ends up burned or in the water. What happened after that? In the end of the lesson, we had a video chat with children from Egypt. We compared the River Nile and the Danube and talked about the pollution, as well as about the ways to reduce it. Do you want to hear a part of our chat? Yes, of course. In the end, everyone got a certificate from National Geographic for being a plastic warrior. Oh, I would like one as well too. I have to go now. Thank you for a great story. This activity touches the local, regional and the global scales. The students learn about their closest environment by making a plastic reduction plan for their schools and before that, their own homes, which is a local scale. The students are learning about the Danube pollution by playing a trash flow game, which enables them to understand that all of their actions have consequences, which is a regional scale. The students work on solving the world pollution, putting an accent on the ways oceans get polluted by river pollution, which is a global scale. No! I think no! I'm a man! <laughs>
activity is based on observation. We spend time in the Danube, follow tracks of human and animal impact. The children were empowered to reduce the amount of plastic their families use, and they presented their ideas proudly, creatively, becoming real plastic warriors, which also developed their sense of responsibility. Our future step is to develop a sustainable school pollution reduction plan. Applying the National Geographic Learning Framework was an amazing experience for me. I already use it as a basis for an ecologically oriented curriculum, with a goal of starting an ecological club. I chose the topic of plastic and water pollution to empower the future generations of leaders, guiding them to knowledge and giving them a voice to speak up and make a difference. Because only when we self-reflect, we can start changing the world.